Hi, I'm Florian Lampersberger. I'm the director of photography from the documentary Baldiger Unlocked Heart. Yeah, hello, Markus Stein, my name. Uh, I'm the director of the documentary uh, Baldiger, as, it, uh, as the name, as the title says, it's about Baldiger, a great photographer, and I hope people will understand after having seen the movie how great a photographer he was, actually. Das Verdrängen funktionierte noch. Männer kennenzulernen war auch nicht das Problem. Was hat sich verändert in meinem Leben? Dünn geworden. Sieben Kapojis zieren meinen Körper. Was da alles dran hängt. Aids wird sichtbar. Aids wird greifbar. Wenn ich mit einem Mann schlafe, was immer seltener vorkommt, sind diese kleinen Scheißteile immer präsent. Die Vorboten des Todes. Aids hat mir sein Tattoo auf meine Haut gezeichnet. Es hängt so viel an diesen Flecken. Ich kenne Positive, die mir erzählen, dass sie niemals mit einem Kapoji-Kranken schlafen würden. Was sind das nur für Zeiten, wo selbst Betroffene sich untereinander ausgrenzen? Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean-Bord Bobak and we are discussing the film Baldiga Heart Unlocked. Hi, welcome to the Teddy. Uh, we are very happy to have you here. Um, let's maybe start with how did you get acquainted with Jürgen Baldiga's work and do you have like maybe a first memory that you, that you have with this interaction with, with his work? But I got acquainted with uh, Baldiger through Ringo Rosen, who wrote the book. Mm. And uh, he showed me some of his pictures yeah. and the, uh, his diary that we're basically working on in the film as well. Yeah. So this is the basis of what it is. And there's like two things that astounded me. First one was like how sincere he was with himself in, in the diary and how harsh he was with himself and with... Uh, his surroundings in his diary, how open he was, really. Uh, that, f that flashed me pretty much. And then, of course, the pictures. Yeah. Uh, which are as open and as harsh. I don't know if harsh is the real word for that. But um, they're so direct, in a way, uh, that I thought this was kind of pure documentary pictures of the times in the 80s. And it's just later that I found out when digging further into the archive and into basically all of his pictures that I found out this is actually a specific kind of art mm. he's providing, he's doing because like this authenticity that he, that, that, that he has in his pictures is sometimes staged as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is completely fine for him as an artist, yeah? and, 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 it's, uh, and it's astounding uh, how, how well he did that as well. So that was what were my first impressions. I met his pictures or one of his photographies first, I think in the early 90s, when I saw it in uh, a, a, a post, I think, or a print, a big print, in a flat of friends of friends where there was this famous picture of, um, um, what's her name? Sundström, Melita Sundström. Mm. And this uh, understanding in between the photographer and Melita Sundström, the portrait one, uh, was so direct and intimate that uh, I was quite impressed by that back then. I didn't know Jürgen Baldiger at all then. Yeah. Yeah. So that is it, basically. Yeah. How did you? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I never heard before uh, either and uh, I was really impressed uh, because uh, I already knew a lot of photos from him. Yeah. And it was uh, amazing. It, it was oh, it was all the photos were from hi were from him, so it was uh, yeah, quite yeah. astonishing. <laughs> yeah. And you said that then you started doing like research um, on yeah. his work. Can you guide us through a bit of this process of of researching and um, how did you um, get in touch with the many different materials that were used um, for the film? Yeah, almost all of the material is in the uh, Schwules Museum here in Berlin. 
Um, and uh, Aaron Neubert, who holds the rights, um, he gave us access to all, all this material, which is, first of all, the diaries, which um, he transcribed, because you can't read always yeah. Baldegar's handwriting. And this is, I think, 7,000 PDF pages. Okay. So that's quite a lot yeah. um, that you have to go through. And then all his material, I mean, there's photo books, four photo books of, uh, of Baldegar, and uh, there's loads of negatives. And negatives nobody really ever has seen. Mm. So we had to screen all of them, s uh, go through all of them in order to know what we're actually talking about in the film. And then um, Ringo and me, we, we worked on this, like, how we get a story across with yeah. all, all this uh, material. And we decided pretty early on that we tried to do that in chapters. Yes. in order to get a bit away of the chronology of, uh, of the story about Baldega because there's specific themes that are more interesting and they go through all of his writing. Yeah. Um, all on through all of his well poems, which he wrote as well, and uh, through his diary. Um, so we thought, like, let's concentrate on this in seven chapters. Yeah. Uh, I think that was the basic thing, the basic decision. And no, actually, more basic is that uh, we thought he should guide us. So mm -hmm. his diary should guide us, which has several implications. Like um, the first one is we don't have that many people talking about him. Yeah, it yeah, shouldn't, right. shouldn't be a film about uh, people talking about a deceased person. Yeah? yeah, especially since we had the diary. But the second implication is that um, he, well, the diary is a specific form of literature. Yes. It's very specific. Yes. Very specific. Uh, you don't write in there, oh, I'm so happy uh, this day, uh, I saw a beautiful flower, and uh, no. so I feel good. And that's what he mentions in there as well. It's all his frustration that is in there. And this tends to give you a wrong impression of the character, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Meaning as if he was depressed all the time, but he wasn't at all. He was pretty... Um, I didn't meet him personally. It's just like what I learned uh, from people who talked about him. He was very active, self-confident, um, not that loud, and he wasn't speaking that much all the time. Yeah. As you would think when you have a film based on the diary, that he's speaking all the time, so we have, we have a voiceover of his diary. But he wasn't speaking that much, it was just like writing. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so we had to do something about this, and this is where then, again, interviewees came in, who could tell us about him. But we didn't want to do too much about it. So these were the corner, uh, cornerstones, basically, of how yeah. we constructed. Interfering, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was interesting to see, because obviously there are like many different materials used from the diary entries that you mentioned, the photographs, obviously, some um, archival footage, some um, Super 8 film segments, and then, of course, the interview segments as well that you say. Um, so I was interested how you weaved it all together um, and how because you say that there are these seven chapters and it was more like these thematics that were coming from his work and from the diaries as well. But then from a material point of view, how to pull all of that together is like something that I'm, I would be interested in hearing about. Well, it's a documentary, right? So yeah. you're stuck pretty much with uh, what you have, right? And of course, we wanted to tell the story uh, about which is, I think, important. Uh, working class, gay, young man who comes to Berlin yeah, and is shocked by the city and how big it is. Mm. Um, so we started off with him getting, uh, arriving in Berlin and then we were stuck with what he actually did. He wanted to be an artist. He decided to be an artist, which I found, found really adorable. Mm. Yeah, because this is something that's I understood when, when dealing with that issue, it's like you would have first to decide it. You don't need necessarily to know in which arts. You just yeah. want to be an artist and you s you're sure that you have to tell people, you have to tell th th things, you, know, you have something to tell. Um, but not quite 
he wasn't quite sure in which art, so he did a lot of things and he did uh, the Super 8 recordings, he did art performances, he wrote poems, all of that before we finally discovered photography mm. as his art. Yeah. And well, we have this material, or we have this material, so we thought, well, we got to show that. And yeah. for me personally, it was important as well to say, to see how someone starts writing poems and they're pretty naive in the beginning and how quickly they develop, like, uh, mm. develop into something really thoroughly thought of, for instance, yeah. which wasn't in the beginning like that. It's just like, just went out and showed what he had to say without thinking too much, I think. Uh, but that changed quickly and then, um, well, we had to show this, uh, this, these yeah. arts. And so this is kind of chronologically, but then we go rather further into details. It's like one chapter is libido, yeah. for instance, in which we then took uh, excerpts of the full diary and condensed that together. Yeah. Yeah? For that chapter, yeah. I mean, because the interesting part for it is that then the whole film gets a quite specific texture to it based on all of these different materials coming together. So it's like certain points, it's almost like palpable. There is this very tangible, palpable relationship that the viewer can have with those images. So that's why I was like a bit curious about the this whole visual identity that you created in the film. Um, if you have any, any insights about that. Well, we thought Ringo and me, we, we, we thought these chapters that, that we have in there, the structure in chapters, the chapters should work each in, his, in its own way. Mm. So this is why the one chapter is exclusively of his photography, for instance, yeah. which is the libido chapter. Yeah. Yeah? And others is, uh, uh, the last one is very, oh no, the, 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 the fourth chapter is almost only an interview. Yes. Or uh, not almost only, but it's a, a big part is interview, yeah. while others were completely without or just without bits and pieces of interviews in the background, mm. which he all recorded, and some of them are only in off screen, so we don't even see the fine imagery that he <laughs> created. Yeah, exactly. Which was a pain to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then that's where also a question of narration comes into the into the picture, because obviously there are all these images and there is this very clear structure of the film with the seven chapters and there is still a sense of chronology of course yeah. um, that follows from him arriving to Berlin and then of Absolutely. course until, um, until he mm. ended his life. Um, but the narration also works very interestingly because very often we don't really see who is speaking. We see images and then as you said the the amazing imagery that you shot <laughs> when you <laughs> recorded the interviews were left out and we are we are following um, Badiga's work um, instead. So then there is also this um, multiplicity of voices um, in the film which are like kind of transposed onto his work and it's almost as if it's a kind of dialoguing with with the pictures um, that we see. So I was curious how you constructed um, the narration for the film. Oh, that's too broad a question <laughs> for me. Sorry, it's too difficult for me, uh, for me to answer because it's so much into, uh, so, so detailed when you, when you work on that. So um, like uh, it's the interview, there's interviews that fill in what we thought is missing uh, a missing element uh, in the narration about Baldega and out of Baldega. Um, but then you have, at the same time, you have his photography, right? And it was a big issue until the last editing day, really. Yeah. Um, do, we, do we have these photo uh, photographies of him as an as, as artwork within its with his uh, own right? Or do we use it as... Um, uh, how do you call that? Um, just the uh, images. Yeah, just the images in order to illustrate. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Uh, just to illustrate the narration of either the interviewees off screen or Baldiga himself off screen. So we found out that at some point these images, if we use them straight uh, uh, just to show 
what we heard, then this is wrong and we don't see the picture, pictures as an art piece within its own right. Mm. And this is a very, very uh, tacky, very yeah. delicate thing to manage in the editing. Yeah. It's timing really. Yeah? It's sometimes you have a sentence and the image that goes with it comes, I don't know, 10 seconds later. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. And, and this, uh, well, we tried at least in, in the editing to produce a living organism, so to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the uh, the imagery and the and uh, interviews and uh, diaries, yeah. which, which is a big part of it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, and that also kind of brings me because there were like elements that were sort of like reenactment uh, <laughs> scenes in it, which was also a really interesting addition to it because you mentioned it in the in the beginning when you talked about Baldegas' work that. Yeah, it had this very urgent documentary feel to it, but then it was also at the same time very staged and stylized very often. And then it was very interesting to see how all of this work and all of the different materials that we already talked about come together and then there are like these tiny little reenacted segments which kind of, to me, felt in line with, with this way of working that that we that we see in in Valdiga's work. Did you think so? Yeah, I, I kind of Ooh. felt that <laughs> way. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. Great. Yeah, Florian had a big part in there. We discussed that an awful lot through yeah. months and months. Yeah. Uh, we so so did think, some slopes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we tried to find out how, how the style should be exactly yeah. and why and how we're going to do that. Would you fill in some yeah. there? Yeah. Especially because of the, I mean, uh, the, the photos of uh, uh, um, f uh, from Bali guys are so amazing, and uh, at, the, at the center of the film, and yeah. and to find it's it's quite it's an, uh, it's quite hard to find uh, images who cooperate or uh, um, work together with with the with the photos from from uh, yeah. Jung. So uh, yeah, first thing is format. Yeah. Why did we why did we decide on the format that we use? <laughs> <laughs> we, we yeah. Did you notice the we, switched, we switched the format. We switched the format to four, uh, four by three. No. You really? didn't even notice. Yeah. I, I haven't noticed that. No. Okay. Well, that's actually good news. Yeah, I think, I think. because of the photos. The photos uh, don't mm. are have the same uh, they're not full screen, so no. yeah. Yeah. So we have a, 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 a really wild mix of formats yeah. there. Partly we zoom into the photos, but partly we just have them, the, the way they are two by three, I think that is. And then we have the interviews in one by one 85, right? Yeah. Is it 85? Yeah. yeah, 85. And then we have the four by three, like old television style or old, very, very old film style uh, format for the reenactments. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good news that you didn't notice. No, I was not paying attention, I think, okay. or like it was not so obvious. I was probably just like carried away with, with all the different things that were, uh, that were happening. Um, and of course, it was also a lot of new material, so mm. it's interesting to, to dive into and all the mm. diaries, which, of course, again, a completely different um, mm. um, image comes, uh, comes with that. Um, but let us. Let, let, let us, because I, I think this is interesting. It's like, wh why why did we come up with uh, the this, this reenactment? Yeah. Actually, which I noticed we didn't answer the question yet. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, uh, but I kind of felt that yeah, this is going to come. So yes. <laughs> why did we come up with it, and why did we do it the way we did it? Actually, and we had big talks about. Um, how are we going to actually do it? Should we try to make have a, a real Baldega reenactment as if he was there? Mm. Uh, and then we did it a different way, uh, with him not really being seen ever, yeah. at least not his face, because we found out at some point this would spoil our whole business, mm. because we see him, we see photographies of him, yeah. right? Uh, but at the same time, we thought it would be needed to um, to have a, a living imagery of that time, um, which we didn't try to make in a way that 
you could feel this was really it, but it was rather our imagination of those times. So how yeah. imagination, if you hear something, if you see still photography, how would you imagine that? So we kind of reconstructed, for instance, the uh, Schwutz. Yeah. Or two places, we mixed two places because the Schwutz moved, right, in Berlin yes. during this time. And we reconstructed, built actually one of those. And I was quite happy that we had one of our interviewees whom we asked. He, we led him there and he mm -hmm. spent a lot of time in the real Schwutz, in the real different Schwutzes, right? Yeah. And I was quite happy that he looked around and said, yes, that represents the feeling of back then. Really happy about that. Yeah. And then we had like it filled with nowadays people, right? So it should be quite obvious and the imagery, like uh, the colors, the lights, uh, should be as well the same, like on, on, on the brim, on the edge of. It's a bit like back then, but we see it's today. Yeah. Yeah, that was the idea. And I think the idea behind it is like this is. Um, uh, a question to the audience or uh, in order to make them sort of start their own imaginary action to get them mm -hmm. into imagine something themselves that's the way I would put it how, how yeah, I think so too yeah, we want to create an atmosphere and not and, uh, um, I mean yeah. we didn't have the budget to to <laughs> create the create whole thing, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. it was for us it was important to have a feeling over it and, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. the rest is up to, yeah. up to the audience. Yeah, but then that's interesting because then basically it's sort of like an imprint of your imagination that came from those images mm -hmm. and now you are leading with that the imagination of the audience. So that's, yeah, that's like a quite interesting uh, uh, setup. That, that was the attempt and yeah. we wait for the premiere in order to find out if it, uh, out if it worked out or not. <laughs> yes, well. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, yeah, another question that came up to me regarding the materials. I mean, a very big chunk of the work that we that we see is photographs, so still images. But then obviously this is a moving image that we are seeing. Um, and for me, that was kind of um, a question that came up while watching that, what does that really do to the filmmaker when they are pulling um, still images into a moving image. Obviously, the moving image itself is built up of still images. Does that make you more conscious of the medium that you are working with? Um, or, or what is the relationship here? Because I thought that was an interesting thing when the photograph, the still image is being pulled into a moving image. How much time do we have? <laughs> we have the, 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 next, the next answer is going to last half an hour. Good. No, 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 I'm joking. Um, trying to make a joke. Um, this goes very much into detail because I went into this archive and I did uh, take pictures of the negatives. I screened all the negatives. Um, I have a big file of what is where, yeah. because this is not very, <coughs> this is not in order, it's just like in boxes, <coughs> grey boxes, and each yeah. box has a folder or three folders, but they're not, not chronologically, it's just like this is how they ended up there mm. in these boxes when Baldega died. So the first box you open is the last pictures he took and it's like it's a complete mess. And then you see his own prints, not only the negatives, but as well, as well the prints. And he hasn't been much of a craftsman, let's put it like that. He didn't mm. put much effort into doing shades of grey perfectly, not, not the way he works. Yeah? Uh -huh. okay. he, he works very meticulously on, on, on colour, grey, uh, colour and, and light. And Baldiger apparently didn't. This wasn't sort of mm. <coughs> his cup of tea. Um, later a bit more, but in the beginning not, not at all. Well, he was self-taught, right? So in the yeah. beginning, he wasn't a photographer. Huh? In the beginning, he wasn't a that's photographer. Right. So yeah, yeah, he was yeah, self-taught. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, and at that point, sort of, you got to go really, really into detail. And we just finished this film recently, so um, I'm not completely out of this detailed work, yeah, yeah, so to sure. say. Um, 
But in the end, this is something, of course, you decide you make a film on a photographer. So you know you have still photography in there. Now you could move these images all the time because it's moving images and you want these images to be moving because you get bored if you have a still image. Mm. And so, of course, in the editing we did experiments um, and we wanted to get a bit the, the texture yeah. of negatives, of prints in there. Maybe we didn't succeed as much as I wanted it in the beginning, but then again, I mean, how much do you get of what you planned before? But we knew we would see, we wanted, we wanted to see um, negatives with the perforation or the whole uh, page of negatives of one film um, in order to get a, a sense of the work it means to be the photographer, the photographer yeah. Yeah, and the, the texture of the, the, the material itself. So at that point we started to move these images yeah, when we had sort of a, uh, six negatives in a row. So we move them so we see them one after another and we don't jump in order to see that. And others we found were just much more important having them completely without movement just so you we, we could see aha this is actually the photography that uh, Baldegger did and others mm -hmm. which is equally important is we reconstructed what uh, was, was there in the books in the, in the prints that, that had been there before before later and um, we thought important it's important to have have it the way it's been organized in the book, two pictures at a side, or the two pages, the side of the two pages. Um, yeah. th that's an important decision, yeah? So we should present that as well, just yeah. the way it was. This is sort of the, the whole uh, attempt. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, one thing that was very striking to see and it's obviously very close to um, to Baldiga's work is kind of the documentation of the of the entire HIV/AIDS epidemic and crisis going down um, in Berlin at the at the second half of the 80s, early 90s. Um, and there was this one particular segment in the film where um, medical workers uh, from the time were interviewed, and they were talking about. Um, or they're sharing their their perspective um, on the whole situation at the time, and I thought that was very nicely paralleled with what came out of the diaries and what was <laughs> presented in the works and what we like tend to know about yeah. about this ab about this time. Um, I'm wondering how did you come to this idea to incorporate because it was also at the same time it was a bit obviously like falling out of the of the natural world of of this film but then it it brought in a very interesting perspective and a very important voice to it so i was wondering how did you come to this decision and um and what 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 was your main idea with this well they were there as well for sure and they haven't been portrayed very very often and they, and what uh, Mr. Araste says, we, we wanted, I wanted to have much more of his perspective in there, but then you have a limit, limited time. Uh, this was basically Ringo Rosner's idea to incorporate that. Yeah. Just because it was, it tells us kind of uh, the other side that hasn't been told very often, but these people are still around and uh, these people, uh, still working, not, not just around, they're still working yeah. in, in the hospital and they're still working with HIV AIDS uh, patients. Of course the situation nowadays is completely different but they still do it and they've been there uh, when they were very very young, when they just started working and they ended up in the HIV ward if you allow to say that. They tried not to mention, not, not, mm. to, not to call it like that back then. Uh, of course, everybody knew the, the main chunk of people lying there were HIV uh, AIDS patients. Um, and I, th I think we thought it was just simply important to get this perspective in as well. And it, the interviews were, were when we let this interviews had these interviews, it was very very touching, because these are people who are still affected deeply by that situation mm. back then 
And these are the ones, like you would say, didn't have anything to do with it in the first place. Yeah, when it was called, uh, when AIDS and HIV was called an, uh, a gay epidemic. Yeah, but they were on the first front all the time. And so this, I think, this needed to be told, especially as well because, uh, well, HIV uh, patients mm, spend a lot of time in hospital. So. It was a good idea to get the full image, I mm -hmm. think, of that. Yeah. In connection to that, another um, very nice aspect um, in Baltica's work is his work with, with the so-called Tunten, or Queens, um, in, in the English version. Um, and of course, he was working on this Tunten book, mm -hmm. um, the Queens book. Um, and we hear a lot about how this particular um, community within the co community, if you will, um, the, the Tuntan particularly played an important role in dealing with this epidemic. Um, and they took they real center stage in trying to um, advocate for change and trying to help um, and trying to just navigate the to go public situation. As well. Yeah, yeah, as public as you can. Yeah. Um, so, and this is also very central um, in the film. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about the Tuntan and what was your impression about the relationship of Baldiga and the Tuntan? <laughs> because that's also. Do you have insights on that? Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, Baldiga himself, although we have this uh, moment where uh, he says. Making the books on the making the book on the queens uh, awakens the queen and me. Yeah. yeah, but that wasn't his world, really. I think right. uh, he was in leather. He was in everything. Yeah, but not that much into them. But he met them, um, got to know them closer by portraying them, and then they became, I think, kind of a second family, really. Mm. Uh, although that wasn't let's put it like natural to him, yeah. I don't know if you can put it like that, really. Uh, but they became his family, and uh, uh, he was very close with uh, Melita Sundström and others. And yes, they were, I think, that important. The funny thing is that we interviewed three of them for the film, and. One Ichkula told us, uh, it's funny that people should talk about that because like these Tunten shows uh, or the, uh, their group uh, existed only two years before they sl split up because everybody was in fight, fight with everybody else. But the fact that we still talk about it means it did have a real impact. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so I'm uh, I'm full of respect, absolutely full of respect of what they did and how they found themselves and how they organized themselves uh, in order to uh, to yeah well conduct this activism of theirs. Yeah, and they weren't quite uh, uh, well respected within the gay community, if you can say community here. Yeah, yeah, so they were sort of the lower of the lowest, and yet put a lot of pride in that, in who they were and how they were. And each of them was, was, was different, yeah? uh, the way they dealt with their sexuality, the, uh, the, the male, female part, or how did they decide, that they, de um, how they, they define themselves as gay or queer or transgender, all of that was already back then there uh, an issue. And this is, I think, what, what was important for us as well to show nowadays that it wasn't just like one block. That it was within this very tiny group, already this big, broad variety in there. This, I think that was important for, for, for us as well to tell. Yeah. yeah, and as you say, the activism part, of course, is very important. And we see in the film as well that it was Tuntan who kind of um, brought to life the HIV association, who were then taking Absolutely. care of uh, a lot of HIV patients who, mm. who couldn't find the right care in, in the normal medical system as well. Um, and that also 
gets a very central part towards the second half of the film, this association and that how Jürgen Baldiga himself ended yeah. up um, being cared Taken by care of, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th this care element as well somehow, and because you say, and that also comes through the film, that there were like a lot of like bickering and 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 fights between <laughs> between between uh, between the Tuntan, but then at the same time, like this whole crisis and the severity of the situation kind of yeah created this sense of family, and there was this need to care, uh, which at the end they took upon themselves and not other They're members quite, of the larger community. Quite big, isn't it? Absolutely. So this is where, so where sort of where, where I say this is this is so big. This is uh, what they did there. From looking at looking at it from today's point of view, this is really really astounding. Yeah. How they managed. Well, they were in the situation under threat on a daily basis on their own and yet they went active and went, went doing things. This was just, just like so adorable. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Well Berlin also becomes important, obviously, um, in the film. Um, and there is a lot of different images of Berlin that we see. But what I thought was um, the most fascinating maybe is this it's how Berlin um, kind of shines in the film um, in comparison to chapter four, where we see Essen, where we see the, the beginnings <laughs> of Jürgen and, and uh, where he is coming from and what um, that place represented um, for him in his life. And this is, uh, for me, the kind of why I say it in this way, that it's, it's sort of like in a comparative way because these dualities um, like somehow became very important in the film through Jürgen Baldiga's work and we talked about this that there is this documentary with like the stylized that's like one duality this whole thing that we just talked about now that yeah he was not really it was not his environment really this whole Tuntan thing but then at the same time, yes, it awakened in him the Tuntan, and there are constantly like these dualities in his personality and in his work, and then we also see that with kind of like Essen and Berlin, because of course he was like proud to be a working class child and coming from uh, from there, and that he made it from there to Berlin and he established himself there, and then. Berlin also represented like this big freedom and 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 creativity and um, and but you notice, energy. You notice in the beginning he goes Berlin, you're so big, I'm afraid. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's uh, that. I think that everybody of us can sort of connect to at least when I moved to Berlin mm. in the eighties, a bit later than Jürgen Baldiger. Yeah. It's just the same for me. It's like the first two months. I mean, I, I, di I didn't go. Uh, had an, uh, another guy, like he said in his diary, uh, each week and another guy in bed. Uh, but yet, it's like from everybody who comes from a little uh, small town. Uh, we always wanted to use small town boy, but then we decided not to. Uh, <laughs> well, that would have been the time, right? Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, until today. So it's it's still it's 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 still there. I I, I met uh, young persons who said, well, yes, I, I've been living in Berlin half a year, but I'm moving home again. I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's too big and it's too confusing. It's much, yeah. yeah, pretty much for for several people. And then again, the scene, the so-called scene in Berlin, is made uh, is is all from little towns. Yeah, yeah. loads of them. Yeah. Doesn't make it different from London, I guess. Or wherever people come from all across and mm. meet there in order to, as you can say, as you say in German, sich selbst realisieren. How would you put that into English? How do you would put, put that? To fulfill themselves. To fulfill themselves, maybe, maybe. yeah. To live yeah. their life yeah. there, basically. Yeah. Uh, but yet, in the beginning, and this is something I could strongly connect to, and I always thought, well, we sh should get that as well, sort of in this reenactments a bit. It's like, mm. it's yellowish light in my remembrance which might not be yeah, uh, the way I recall it it's the this the stink of coal that you had in there in the 80s yeah. yeah and then it was an island 
right? You couldn't get as easily out and back and forth. This made a, spe a specific, gave a specific pressure on, on, on the town as well. Uh, yeah, we, we, we tried as good as we could to transport a bit of that, that atmosphere. In line with the Baldegas diary, of course, because I mean, did I mention that already today? It's the main chunk, it's Baldegas' story. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely like the main voice. And uh, told by him. That's, that's driving yeah. the mm -hmm. film and with like some other voices uh, complementing um, his, his very... He stands, in, in that aspect, he stands for so many people. Yeah? Yeah. I just came to Berlin and sort of started a new life, were confused and then organized themselves, organized their lives, found their lives. I had so heard so many stories about like the first time they went to, sh to the Schwutz. Mm -hmm. And so, wow, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Ah, this life is possible in the Schwutz, yeah? All from these little towns. I heard that so often. Uh, so he stands for a, a, a lot of people. A lot of people had this very, very similar experiences. and. You can connect to, I think you can, when, when you, I hope when you watch the movie, you can connect to that uh, with your today's experience as a young person who comes yeah. first to Berlin. Maybe it gives you strength to say, okay, first months are difficult, but I'm going to make it here. Especially for queer pe uh, people. And so yeah. I mean, yeah. it's for, for everyone, but uh, for, for queer people, it's, it's, uh, it has another dimension to go to Berlin or another big city where you can live as you are. Was it, how was it for you like? I mean, it was the same to go to the Schwutz uh, Club the first time. It was, oh my God, what, what happened here? Uh, mm. um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm wondering that um, if, um, let's imagine somebody has never heard of Jürgen Waldiga before, and this is their first encounter um, with him and with his work, your film. Um, what do you hope? What would they take away? Well, first of all, of, of course, how great an artist he was, how great a photographer he was, mm -hmm. uh, how he was able to approach the persons he portrayed in a eye-level way. And mm -hmm. I don't mean like, like the point of the camera, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the internal. <laughs> Thing that he was there was really trust in there, and I heard often that he just talked to people. Yeah, he approached them and talked to them, and then asked them if he could take a photo, a photo of them. And this was back then. This was different from this here. Yeah, it was like I didn't take a quick yeah. picture, but it, it was a real photo camera. It was a real act, and people were really nervous that somebody steals my soul. You know that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and he overcame. All of that, and went really onto. Uh, he really captured the way they were, or they. And what what is even better in the Queen's book, he captured them. Sometimes, not all of, always, the way they saw themselves. Now, yeah. and they want to be seen. Like and they this, want to yeah. be seen. Yeah. Now, here's a problem, uh, as Ingo Taupon explained to mm. us. Well, if I take a photograph, I'm quoting Ingo Taupon now, if I take a photograph of uh, Donald Trump and he sees it and says, yes, that's the way I see myself, I obviously made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? So, in general, but when it comes to the Queens, I think uh, the game is a bit different. Because they fight to be uh, the person they want to be, really. Mm. Yeah? And he captures that in yeah. agreement with them. And this, this is big, I think, this is uh, a quality that he had, uh, that not a lot of people had, really. Mm. So this is the main thing that I want people to, to, to see and to understand. And then, important for me is, uh, a part, of course, from the gay activist thing, is this working class thing, yeah? Mm. You have a working class boy coming to Berlin and he makes his way. Uh, I tend to say, although maybe it doesn't make me a lot of friends, but diversity is looked at in, in Germany not in a very broad way. Yeah. Mm. So this is an important part as well. And this connects a lot of uh, these Tunden in the Schwutz as well, the Queens in the Schwutz. Uh, they had in between themselves, they had fights, and I often heard that is like, and this is the problem Baldiger had as well. They said, well, you want to be an artist, you didn't even study. Mm. Yeah? 
And some of the queens, and it's unfortunate that we don't, unfortunate that we don't have um, Tima with us today. Of course, she's ill, unfortunately, and she could tell you about that exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like you come from an, another background, and you're not recognised within your own peers and within your own group, just because you're not, you didn't study, yeah. you didn't have a higher degree. This is, wow. <laughs> yeah. And I think this is a theme still you could connect to today, still happens today. Absolutely. So that's the second, or th this is the third important thing that I want yeah. people to take away from having seen that movie then. Yeah. Well, then one week from now, audience is uh, below. <laughs> see the film. Yeah, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Slowly we will, we will see if yeah. this is what they take away. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank we should have talked a bit about how this imagery worked. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. <laughs> huh? Next time you should be prepared for that yeah. in order to get that across because that wasn't easy either.